Trimble RPT600 Rapid Positioning Tool. What's in the box? The RPT600, two batteries to run it, a 360 cat eye prism that goes on top of the prism pole, 10 cat eye square targets that you can use to place around your job site, a battery charger as well as its power supply to power or charge up the two batteries. You have a Dell Venuate tablet with a ruggedized case and clamp attachment that's used to attach the Dell tablet to the prism pole and then you have a power charger and power supply to charge up your Dell tablet. Uh, you also have an active stylus for the Dell tablet if you choose to use it. The nice thing is that everything fits very nicely and neatly into this box so if you're leaving the job site and you have an empty spot it means you've left something behind so you know not to hopefully forget it. The tripod and prism pole. So the tripod, uh, the the uh, RPT 600 sits on top of the tripod. You have the prism pole that the Dell tablet attaches to. The prism pole is adjustable for height, and it has a plumb bubble on it to you, so you can make sure that your your prism pole is is perfectly plumb. And then that 360 cat eye prism attaches to the top of it. On the right, we've got a operator. Uh, either laying out some points or measuring something uh, using the system. So how the system works is trigonometry. We've got slope distance, vertical distance, horizontal distance, all of the angles in between, and then you start factoring in uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds in a circle. So we've got a lot of uh, angular uh, mathematics as well as trigonometry, and this looks a little complicated, however, the nice thing is is the system does all of the work for you. So you don't have to concentrate on doing math out in the field, you can concentrate on your task at hand. When we initially set the system up on the job site, we need at least two control points. And the control points are hopefully provided by the general contractor, and hopefully your CAD department also knows about those control points. We want those control points to be accessible on the job site, and we want the CAD department to get those points into our points file and background file that we're going to have on our tablet. And when we set the instrument up, we want to make sure that we've got a good triangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. 90 degrees is kind of the sweet spot, but it's pretty forgiving. And the important thing is, is you just don't want that instrument set up directly in line with your control points. So we've got the happy triangle, and we've got the sad triangle. So on the next couple slides, I've got some examples of that. This is Nick, and he set his instrument up in the middle of this room. And the first two points that he chose, one happens to be on the wall. He can shoot that one with the laser. Uh, the, the other point is on the floor, and he sets his prism pole on top of it. But Nick doesn't have a very good triangle. The, the points are kind of close together. And, and the system doesn't like that. It's not recommended. And it'll let you know it's not an ideal setup. So Nick says, okay, I'm going to move a little bit. I'm going to choose a different control point. And so Nick does a little bit better job of getting some distance between the points, uh, the control points. However, his instrument is pretty much right directly in, in line with those. And that's, that's not recommended. Again, it's, it's not an ideal setup. So Nick says, I, I remember something about 90 degrees, and I'm not quite sure what that is, but I'm just going to move this instrument a little bit out towards the center of this area. And, and, and there we have it. So he's got a, a better triangle. He's got a good triangle. And, and the system likes that. It's, it's going to let him know that, hey, this is, this is a good setup. So once we get the instrument set up on the job site, um, our farthest control point sets what we call the working radius. And it doesn't matter if that control point is 10 feet away from the instrument or 100 feet away from the instrument. That point sets uh, our radius and we want to be inside of that. Uh, the farther outside of that radius you get, uh, the worse off you're going to be. Your points are going to start to become much out of tolerance and, and your accuracy is, is going to go go really bad. So stay inside of that radius. Um, this is a screenshot of the Trimble FieldLink 2D software that's on the tablet and this instrument has been set up and uh, this operator has selected a point that uh, he or she would like to go and lay out 
and the directions now because the instrument knows where it is on the job site the directions update real time and as long as you're facing the instrument those directions uh, are going to be very accurate to you so in this instance we need to go back uh, five feet I, I know it's a little hard to see and, and left about seven feet uh, it also understands elevation as well and so as we walk and, and get closer you can see the blue line indicates uh, where we are from the robot or the the instrument the red little dot indicates us and and, and where we move and as we get closer to our target uh, it switches uh, the screen switches over to something that we call uh, the bullseye and hockey puck mode and what we want to do is we want to get that uh, hockey puck right on that bullseye and once we do that um, when we're within about three feet of our point it, it, it switches to this view and once we've got that hockey puck right on that bullseye it's going to flash green arrows and uh, as long as we stay there uh, they, they'll stay solid and and that's where our point is and, and we can then mark that um, just use with a marker or something at the tip of our prism pole. So the tolerance is set by you as as the the operator. Uh, there's a setting for it. Um, you can be as accurate as a sixteenth of an inch if you want, or or you can be as as sloppy as an uh, as much as an inch if you you choose to. And again, it's it's taking into account the x, y, and z axis. And think of it as a sphere. Whether you have your tolerance set to half inch, it's a half inch sphere. If if you have it set to one inch, it's a it's a one inch sphere. Now, if you don't care about the vertical tolerance, you do have the ability to turn that off. So then you're only focusing on the x and y uh, axis. So in addition to using the prism pole, there's something called direct reflex laser or laser mode. And it's it's a pretty neat way that this system works. You you turn on uh, the, the DR, uh, direct reflex laser, and you switch it from prism to the laser mode. Uh, you select the point that you would like to lay out and the direct reflex technology is actually going to aim that laser where it thinks that point is but in this example here you can see that the point is actually a little bit higher than the surface that the instrument can actually measure so what it'll do is it'll take an initial measurement it'll start crunching some numbers figuring out a hypotenuse some trigonomic uh, calculations and it will actually adjust that laser and move it and point it exactly where it needs to be in this case you see I've got kind of a suggested plumb line there um, showing the corrected measurement and making sure that you put that point exactly on that X and Y plane where it's supposed to go. So some of the specifications for this system working range is 50 meters or 54 yards or 164 feet, whatever your flavor is there. Accuracy at 50 meters is a about three millimeters okay both with the prism and the laser battery life is five hours that's going to be the default of the tablet now you do have two batteries with the instrument and those will get you five hours a piece um, self-leveling utilizing angular correction it does not have any sort of um, mechanism that would need to be calibrated inside of it on a regular basis it just figures out what the mathematical angles are and it corrects for those when you set it up this allows us to do Trimble auto stationing basically we can set this instrument on its tripod we can let it figure out what it's not perfectly level but it'll figure out what the corrections it needs to make are and then it will actually go and search for targets um, specifically the square cat eye targets if you've placed them around the job site uh, it has a green laser with a fine point on it to help you better see it in sunlight and uh, pinpoint exactly where it is that point is that you want to lay out Trimble Vision is camera. It's, it's built into the instrument and it allows you to see what the instrument is seeing on the tablet um, it's ruggedized, water and dust resistant with an IP55 environmental rating. Um, kind of parts and pieces are just descriptions of what they are. It's pretty basic. You've got a couple handles, you've got a power button, you've got a battery door latch. Um, 
uh, battery door and latch, and, and the camera and laser pointer. Uh, we kept this system very, very simple for you. Um, prism tracking. So when this instrument is in prism mode, it will actually track that 360 cat eye prism. And how it does this is it sends out an infrared laser beam that bounces back and forth off of that reflective cat eye prism. And it allows that instrument to follow that around. That's how we can get those real time dimensions. So the batteries for the instrument itself are smart lithium ion batteries. Uh, they mount inside of that instrument. Um, the battery itself has a little gray button on it. If you press that, it shows you some LED indicators of how full or empty it is. Uh, you can get five hours of operation out of one of those batteries and you get two, so you can run that instrument for, for 10 hours. To charge the batteries up, it comes with a cradle. Um, they will indicate what they're doing, whether they're in a charging cycle or if they're full. Um, it will also let you know if the battery needs to be reconditioned, at which point you can hit the reconditioning button. And what it'll do is it'll cycle that battery up and down and, and restore the health of that battery. So, if you have any more questions about this video or just about the system in general, by all means, please visit mep.trimble.com. Thank you.